What's up guys, it's your favorite Cubic Coach. Welcome back to another reaction video. This one we're doing another Trackman video. You guys really seem to like it. We're taking a look at Martin Chuck talking about angle of attack with driver, how to get you guys hitting the ball further. Let's go do this thing. So welcome back to the channel guys. If you guys are new to Cubic Golf Japan, we do a bunch of videos like this every single week. So what you gotta go do is hit that little red subscribe button, smash the like button, please leave a comment. If you see something in your own golf swing that we're talking about in this video, and as always, please hit that little bell notification. You guys are going to get notified every single time we drop a video. So before I press play, real quick, kind of the main goal of this video is to get you aware of kind of angle of attack, especially with driver and how angle of attack can really help you hit the golf ball much, much further. Now, we're also going to elaborate on angle of attack, maybe add on a couple other data points that this video doesn't talk about. But hopefully, overall, after you leave this video, you at least know kind of the trackman numbers that you need to get for certain club head speeds to hit the golf ball much, much further. So without further ado, let's go take a look at Martin Chuck. Hello, this is Martin Chuck, and I'm doing a trackman educational series. And today we're going to talk about a critical piece, attack angle. For those people that come to see me at the Golf Academy, attack angle is a huge deal as it relates to distance and their driver. I'm going to hit a couple of shots for you right now, and let's talk about the interplay between attack angle and distance. So here's the first one. Yeah, I can't even, I can't agree more. So typically when we get into the lessons, almost 95% of our clients, they want to hit the golf ball further, right? I think that's just a natural human instinct when they get the golf club is how far can I hit this thing? And obviously, most amateur golfers, almost all the time, do not have optimal numbers as well as they're just not hitting the golf ball as anywhere near as far as they could. And I think the biggest thing we tend to see with amateur golfers is they think they need to swing the club faster, which yes, if you swing faster with a good strike, yes, you're going to hit the ball much further, but you can actually gain up to like 30, 40 yards more with extra distance, not even swinging faster, just having the correct launch dynamics. I do it all the time in my lessons. Martin Chuck's going to kind of explain it here, and then I'm going to add on to what he's saying. So the folks that come see me that are struggling with the driver, or certainly struggling with distance anyway, they always have a common theme. They hit down on their driver too much. So while that was a pretty decent shot down the middle, you know, 100, 104 miles an hour swing speed, that attack angle was 7.2 degrees downward. So the resulting carry was... Two all right, so basically what he did there was he was trying to hit a shot that resembled what most amateur golfers are doing, which negative seven angle attack is a little bit on the exaggerated side. Most amateur golfers uh, who do kind of come over the top, who do struggle with distance with the driver, might be closer to like negative three, negative two range. But the overarching theme is, yes, they are hitting downward with their driver, so they're doing a down blow. My personal opinion, I think the reason why this is the case is because a lot of people think that the iron swing and the driver swing should be the same. And if you actually do swing your driver like you swing your irons, yes, you're going to promote more of that downward angle attack, and you're heavily going to struggle with distance. Now, he hit 7 degrees down on the golf ball, swinging at 104 mile per hour. Another thing you got to think about when you're thinking about distance and hitting down on the golf ball, you also got to think about how much loft you're presenting to the golf ball at the moment of impact. So if you hit down on the, let's say driver 7.2 degrees and you present, let's say, I don't know, like 16 degrees of dynamic loft, you're gonna have something called a very high spin loft, which don't get too confused with that name. Just understand that spin loft is gonna directly translate into your backspin, which means you're gonna have too much backspin. The golf ball is gonna go pretty high and then it's just gonna kind of fall out of the air like that. So really the arc of your golf ball is too much this way and it's not flat enough to really get the optimal carry as well as getting uh, more roll after the shot. So that's kind of what he's talking about in this section here. 228 yards of carry, which isn't bad, don't get me wrong. And the total yardage was 254 yards. So not bad for a seven down angle attack, <laughs> not bad. And if I've made people smile with track man, it's by modifying their attack angle and they can see it right away in the carry in the total. So let me hit a shot, same speed, same guy. And let's play around here with attack angle. And then I'll put in a coaching element for you here so you understand this a bit more. And you can apply Can't be a Martin Chuck way. video without a coaching so element. If we, if we hit down seven degrees at that speed, let's see if we can modify that just a little bit. So 
So this is a big difference, and I really didn't even hit that that solid. So that attack angle went from hitting down 7 to hitting up 1.8 degrees. That carried 240 and went... To okay, so as you can see, he shifted his angle of attack more on the upward, right? So 1.8 relative to 7.2, that's roughly like almost 9 degrees of shift right there with his angle of attack. We're seeing about an 18 to 20 yard gain in terms of carry, and then the total was maybe about... Uh, just under 10 yards of total distance. And the reason why the total didn't go way up, I think, in my personal opinion, was because he probably didn't get the correct strike slash dynamic loft relative to this angle attack to really get optimal rollout. So what was happening there was most likely his descent angle was a little bit too steep because he probably had too much backspin on this particular shot. And that's why he didn't hit it out there like 275. But anyways, the main point in this video so far is if you can shift your angle of attack a little bit more on an upward blow especially for you slow swinging players which i'll explain what a slow swinging player is here in a sec but if you can kind of shift that upward angle attack get the correct dynamic loft relationship relative to your angle of attack you're going to start really optimizing your distance relative to the club head speed that you have so let me kind of give you guys some parameters that you should be thinking about when you are trying to optimize your driver for distance so first things first we get a lot of clients who are swinging anywhere from about 38 meters per second to about 42 meters per second, so definitely a slow swinging player. If you're in that model, you're going to be wanting to get right around like the plus 7 angle of attack range with about 18 degrees of dynamic loft. That's going to be a really good range for you guys to hit the ball much higher, and you're going to have relatively low spin, probably anywhere from about uh, 1900 to 2100 relative to kind of how you differentiate these numbers. But what you're going to see is your carry is going to go much further and you're going to start having the potential to hit the ball probably like 30 to 40 yards further. So again, I've had recently actually too as well about five clients who were swinging right around 40 meters per second. They were only hitting the golf ball like 210 yards total. Carry was like 180 yards. And then after the lesson, they were carrying it closer to about 220. And then total I think was like 250 yards, right? So gain them about 40 yards just by changing their launch dynamics and we didn't even change the speed of their golf swing right so this information is very powerful if you're trying to hit the golf ball further uh, to wrap this up for you faster swinging players so maybe someone who's swinging 45 meters per second or above you can get away with not hitting on the up as much and still get some distance see what, what you're seeing with the pga tour players let's say the average club head speeds maybe about 113 mile per hour which is going to be about Ooh, I'm not good with meters per second. Maybe that's about 47 to 49 meters per second, I would say, roughly somewhere in that range. What you're seeing with those players, they're actually hitting one degree down with the driver. They're actually hitting a little bit of a down blow, but the dynamic loft is at a point to where they're not getting too much uh, backspin because their spin loft is not too great. So they're getting away with the shot, but they're not really optimizing for distance on the PGA Tour, most of the guys, um, but some of them are trying to optimize for distance. So Really, um, that leads maybe into another other interesting video about how the tour players might be trying to start shifting their driver swings to kind of match like a Bryson DeChambeau effect, but uh, that's another video I don't want to get in here. Really, main thing is make sure you're uh, paying attention to your angle of attack and your dynamic loft when you are hitting your driver. You're going to have a really good chance of hitting the golf ball further. Um, if you guys like this information but you feel like there's not really actionable steps to this, well, don't worry. We're currently working on a whole online course where we're going to teach you guys to hit the golf ball much, much further. We did a TV show with Mr. Kanemoto, um, Quest for 350 Yards or One on Challenge. I forget what it was called, but we've done it with him. We've done it with lots of our clients before. I'm pretty good at um, being able to get people to hit the ball much further. So that online course, uh, I'm really excited about, but that won't be for maybe another six to eight months but make sure to keep looking on our website maybe subscribe to our newsletter to kind of get all that information but yeah that's the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed it's really interesting stuff here i think um martin chuck is right on the money make sure to pay attention to your angle attack and your dynamic loft you're gonna hit the ball much much further all right guys i'll see you guys again next time